Hey, our pace is looking solid right now, but I do think we need to push harder. Port. Welcome back to F1 2016 here guys. As you can see we just got an R&D event there and it's showing that Manor have bought some upgrades to this week in Russia. They're pulling ahead of us and we are being solidified as the second slowest team on the grid. My apologies for the delay in upload, seriously. It's been my fault, it really has, but I aim to please today with this episode as we go for round four, season two. We've got a lot of resource points in the bank and I'm figuring we need to bring a big upgrade package to Spain, which is, of course, the next round after this one. And that's going to be pivotal because that's where all the cars do their testing. So everyone's going to be up to speed in Spain. And, um, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to probably, Spain's probably going to be a tough weekend. I enjoy the Russian Grand Prix circuit. So I believe we're jumping straight into qualifying here, actually. Uh, it was. So that was my first attempt in Q1, a 38-2. That put us 18th. Uh, and then we're going to go out in the absolute death of qualifying. We've got a car just up ahead of us here. I think that's a Williams by the looks of things. Run a little bit of wide out of that corner and our Delta's not looking too good. Check a flag full. Wow, we've gone really wide. We've, we've, oh, we've guffed the lap up and, uh, and we've crashed out in the end of Q1. Well, I said we were the second slowest car on the grid and, uh, we've solidified that with a, with a fantastic 18th place. But we're ahead of Grosjean, and we were we were six tenths, or well, you know, the better part of five tenths faster than Grosjean. Quite an abrupt intro into the race there. I'd forgotten I'd done that. I've, uh, I've had this race recorded for a little while. And uh, for those of you that don't know, I record the race in advance. And I do post-commentary over. So, yeah, a bit of an abrupt intro. But we were five, five, six tenths faster than Grosjean. So that's promising for the race. Uh, obviously, starting near the back, we have a free choice of tyre. Russia is very easy on the tyres. So we're going to go soft and super soft. Thank God, in the F1 2017 season, they're running ultra softs in Russia. Because you don't need to go mediums. It's redundant and pointless. So our strategy is start on the harder tyre and switch over to the softer one. This was recorded pre-patch uh, for the tyre wear glitch, but obviously that wasn't going to affect the strategy. I was just going to hope that softer tyre at the end will allow me to make up positions considering the performance, uh, you know, performance restraints of the car. Um, I managed to guff it up on the start as well, went into anti-store a couple of times. I don't, I don't know why I was sitting there doing it. It was just Something to keep me amused. Uh, Grosjean, split strategy here in Haas. He's going to be starting on the super soft tyre. Russia is an absolute nightmare for lap one collisions. I don't know what it is with the AI, but you've, you've probably seen it in other career mode videos if you do watch F1 career mode videos. The, the insanity that can take place during that right kink and on the way down to this chicane. But now as we build towards the five lights for the Russian Grand Prix, lights out and away we go. We've got a pretty decent start in comparison to Verline. We're going to pull over to the right, slip into the slipstream of Danny Kvyat here. Uh, nothing too serious going on. I built the hype for it and nothing too much happened there. Verline with his Mercedes power going to get up alongside us. We're going to break late, try and be a hero into turn one, but then get it slowed right down. Bit of wheel banging, arm coming up. We're going to slip between the Force Indies here of Perez and Hulkenberg. Yellow flag is out for some reason. We're taking a wide line as we understeer through the fast left-hander. Hard on the brakes again. Can we get past Perez into turn four? Perez going to hold it. Got the wider line for the traction. Everyone's coming out wide. Can we get him down the inside of this next corner? Yes. Can we look at Alonso? Faint a little look there for potentially 11th place. But we're up to 12th. It's a solid start to the Grand Prix. And, uh, I mean, it, it better than I expected. All these guys ahead running super soft because the, they might as well. The wear on them is pretty decent. The Honda power you see there of Alonso letting him down. 
and we're going to cruise up into 11th place just behind the points on lap one. You didn't see the Russian Grand Prix for, for me in Renault last season because the footage, oh, I'm not going back there. Anyway, we were competitive. I scored my first, uh, not my first points, but you know, a, a strong result, like my best result of the season there. You can see Perez with his Mercedes power coming back at us, especially now that DRS is enabled. Is he going to pull enough of a gap into turn one? Yes, he is. We're not going to make any kind of suicidal move there. We are going to try and straighten up the exit as much as we can to try and get a solid slingshot run on him through this left hander. We run it tighter than Perez, who then slows down on the exit. We're going to slingshot round him hard on the brakes, just about not hit each other. We're going to run it out wide on the exit, though. But we are now up into 11th place. However, the only problem being is they have the Mercedes engine, which is the most powerful on the grid. And we've got, I mean, it's the 2016 Ferrari engine, but still, uh, Perez diving down the inside of the first turn there. We're going to try a switch back move on him as he runs it out wide. Good traction. However, the cars ahead are just pulling away, so you can see the speed deficit of our car. It's just not there at the moment, and I think that's why we're going to be bringing a huge upgrade within the next few uh, next next grand prix as it were got a yellow flag coming around palmer's dropped down to 10 palmer spun out in the middle of the circuit and we got bottas running slowly could there have been contact hopefully we'll get a replay yes we will bottas slight contact oh and he's come back across with after the slight contact with palmer he's come across spun him around on board with palmer they just got caught on the wheels bottas is coming but bottas tries to take the racing line doesn't know palmer's there Palmer's got a puncture from that incident and stopped in the middle of a very fast part of the circuit. You would expect to see some kind of safety car or VSC, but no. Bottas clearly with damage, though, as he's going very slowly. Not the part of the track we want to catch him on, though, but we dive it down the inside anyway. Up into ninth. Two potential championship points here. Um, and obviously the, the cars ahead, we're, we're probably not going to catch them. You know, we need, we need to be realistic with this hush. You know, our two fifth places so far have been very luck orientated. Up into 7th now, the cars appear to have made some pit stops up ahead. Carlos Sainz dives ahead of us, similar to how uh, Perez was doing it. We've gone far too deep into the corner, run it out wide. Would have given the position back to Sainz there, but I think he lost it to Hulkenberg on the exit where he was compromised as well. Down to the chicane, second DRS zone, and Sainz banging wheels. Both drivers hands up in frustration. Sainz has got us there though, we don't need to make a suicidal move into there. There's, there's cars up ahead have been running into each other and the chance of points on the horizon. So that's something we need to be very conscious of here. End of lap nine. Science is ahead of us. Are we going to be able to get the DRS? No, there's a virtual safety car because Hulkenberg from behind has retired. So that's going to disable the DRS. And we would have had a good run on Science here. Up into the first corner. I believe Hulkenberg was an engine failure. That's why I haven't got a replay of that there. Because um, it would have been just out of, the, uh, out of the final corner. And here we go. The VSC is ending. And we're right behind Science, who's now up to sixth due to cars pitting ahead on whatever errors and calamities they've been having. And Science is really slow at the end of the VSC. And it ends just as I was dropping back from him. He caught me napping a little bit. You can see Vettel's now behind us there on the soft compound tyre. So he's made his pit stop and changed. So he's going to be going to the end of the Grand Prix, you would assume. He's now right up behind us. DRS. He tries to take a look to the right. It goes to the left. Vettel with a good move. Is he going to get far enough ahead to keep the position? I don't think so. We're going to send one down the inside, run him out of road. And a fair move. You would expect to see the same from Sebastian Vettel if he was racing with yourself. Uh, and we're, we're going to try and keep in touch with Science here. But the issue being is he is on the super soft tyre. We're on the soft tyre. And our car, as mentioned before, just isn't as fast. You can see the speed differential of the, you know, the, the factory Ferrari team there. As Vettel gets me down the inside of the penultimate corner. Bit of wheel banging into the final corner. Good traction. And here we go. Back up into seventh. Grosjean in the pit lane from way behind us. But you've got to admit, there is a long train. So he's not that far behind us. Vettel now gets through with the DRS. We're going to try and get some slipstream into turn one. Can we make a bold move around the outside? We're definitely going to try it. Vettel pinches himself. And we're back through into sixth position on lap 11. Lap 5, Science ahead of us has made his pit stop. And these soft tyres are going quite far. And still feeling, still feeling okay. The only issue being is the cars behind as Vettel and Magnussen just breeze past us. Our old Renault team there and our old teammate. Oh, we're going to make a big, <laughs> big move on Magnussen. That was, that was too much. That was, um, that was excessive. Magnussen had locked up. But we, uh, we weren't exactly going to make the corner either. Um, we're definitely 
well, I'd say we'd be looking to switch to the Super Softs anytime soon, but we're not even at half distance in this Grand Prix, and you saw the tyres, they're not even at 30%, but they were starting to feel very second-hand, if I'm honest. Magnussen now got past everyone else there and gets back up into sixth. We're not going to make the uh, ridiculous move because he's far too far ahead this time around. We've actually outbroke ourselves here, and we've got Massa behind us, who's definitely going to be looking to pick up the pieces. But, as I say, because of our speed, there's an absolute train behind us. And they're all going to be scrapping for themselves. Massa here with Mercedes power. Low drag setup breezes past us. So does Rosberg. And this is an indication that the car's not great. We're going to dive one down the inside. I, I figured in this Grand Prix, we were going to have to fight for every position, every millimetre on circuit. That's exactly what I did. But now, on, on, the, on the speed, on the straights, they were just too much. But no... Down the middle. Oh, my God, what a move. Rosberg was on the inside. Massa was on the outside. Late breaking. Let's get a replay of that. I mean, they they didn't go into the corner very aggressively. They must have just thought I'd given up on the move. Late breaking. Look at this. Through the middle. Now, Massa's run himself out wide and compromised. He's probably going to lose a bundle of positions here. Meanwhile, flicking onto a lap later, this is Carlos Sainz. And he's going to come into contact with one of the manners there, and well, he's out of the race. Is that Carlos Sainz, or is that... No, sorry, it's Danny Kvyat. Excuse me. Danny Kvyat, hometown boy, trying to get through on one of the manners that had run wide. He's come back through, and the wheel-to-wheel the -wheel contact there is... The manners come off unscathed, but he is... He's out of the race. And again, in that very fast left-hander. So that's a very dangerous position for a stricken car to be in. They would have moved him quite quickly, because there was no safety car. Rosberg now through. Verstappen is just banging in fastest lap after fastest lap. Massa and Rosberg, I think, have finally done me. Yes, they have. They too far ahead to warrant a dive down the inside into the chicane. Lap 16 now. And this is this is this was the popular point. I think I was running too much downforce. Um in a straight line because well, Button's done me. And oh my god, Harry Anso. Look at Harry Anso. Ever the opportunity is three wide. Oh, we've caught, made contact with the side pod on Buttons, Buttons McLaren. Button's gone through. Oh, he's... Yeah, we deserve that. We deserve that. We made such an audacious move on the inside of him. that It was just too much. And then Button, you know, Button or Button's AI just decided, no, I've had enough of your shit. And this is when I had had enough of my soft compound tyres. So we're going to be coming in, uh, almost running out wide out of the pit lane there. But here we go. Fitting a set of the, uh, fitting a set of the super soft tyres to the end of the Grand Prix. And it, it's, it's been a crazy first stint. The only reason we were running as high as we were is, you know, cars up the front were tripping over each other or having their own individual issues. Hopefully now that we fit the super softs, we'll be in a more expected position. Uh, I mean, you know, points points are probably not likely just due to the train that we had behind us. You can see Grosjean, who pitted a long time ago, is now way up the road from us. Uh, and actually, you can see Pascal Verlein try and come through are we going to be able to into turn one well we've well, i i cut it primarily to avoid a crash because he was definitely going to be turning in i didn't really want to compromise myself too much but didn't gain an advantage we're going to gain that same same slingshot that we got on perez at the start of the race as verline looked to cover the uh, the inside ground so lap 21 we've been banging in laps on our super soft tire which are way faster than the soft tire just a ridiculous comparison and we've now closed that massive gap that we had to Grosjean in four laps. And we're now going to breeze past him. He tried to squeeze us a little bit there. So I, just, I kept my foot in, hoping he would realise that I was there. Uh, and obviously our best lap time has come down. We nearly broke into the 39s. But obviously as the tyres wore, our speed did diminish. But we're up into 12th place. And now on lap 26, we've caught it to the back of Marcus Ericsson. We have lost a position because Rosberg made a second pit stop and just stormed through the field. Uh, but here we go, down the inside of the fast left-handers, and well, we've, we've gone out very wide. I mean, not exactly, a, <laughs> not exactly a beautiful move by any stretch of the imagination, but Ericsson didn't exactly look to, uh, to come back from it there. So here we go, final lap of the Grand Prix. We are in 12th. We're not going to be getting any championship points because Fernando Alonso is a long way up the road. Rio Harianto, Mercedes Power, going to look to make a move around the outside of Turn 1. And he's, well, he's bloody done me there, hasn't he? That was good racing from the AI. I'll give full credit to him. We're going to try and make a move on him. Can we get the same, same slingshot? No, we can't. Harianto on the super soft tyre proving to be too good there. And he's got ahead of us quite successfully. 
We're just going to have to defend from Jensen Button going into the penultimate corner. And we're going to come home in 13th place. It's, it's not a good weekend. It's much more like Bahrain, this one. Well, there you have it. Daniel Ricciardo wins four in a row. The one stop proving effective for the uh, for the Red Bulls. Hamilton comes home second. Verstappen, Raikkonen, and Vell. Magnussen, Massa, Bottas, Sainz, and Rosberg. Your top ten. You can see Rosberg with the two stops. A couple of guys tried the two stop, but you can see it wasn't really worth it. And as you can see, we we come home thirteenth, a minute seventeen off the lead. I know we're slow, but <laughs> it was just. It was crazy. We're still eighth in the championship. We're now tying with Massa. Magnussen and Vettel, of course, jumped us there with their points finishes. I mean, it, just, it goes to show the up and down world of Formula One here. We've had two fifth place finishes and two finishes like very mediocre. Not just outside the points. Like we're talking 14th, 15th. It's, it's the swings and roundabouts world of Formula One, really. Um, and like I say, we've got a big upgrade coming at the Spanish Grand Prix, which I'm actually going to look to do now. We've got over 1,500 research, uh, research points or resource points, should I say. Uh, one thing we were burning through quite a lot in these races when we're running in the rich mixture is the uh, the fuel. So we're going to absolutely make sure that's done. Um, we've still got 1,200 points left to play with here. And I think it's all about... Because you, you saw the car in a straight line. Wasn't good whatsoever. So we've bunged on an engine upgrade, rightfully so, because the car does need to be quicker in that straight line. And then finally, of course, we need the downforce because the car is not handling well in the corners. That's the problem. I'm, I'm cranking on more wing angle to account for the car not having downforce. And that's costing me in a straight line. So that's going to bring us to up with mana. So we're, we're, we're going to be joined seconds to lowest car on the grid because, you know, that will either diminish them or promote us, whatever you want to say. But um, not a good Russian Grand Prix. Not a good one at all. Um, obviously, a lot to reflect on. This weekend, I mean, the driving, for one, wasn't up to scratch. So we'll try and get that changed for the Spanish Grand Prix. It's going to be a rough weekend as well because that's that's where the teams do all their testing. So just because we've bought an upgrade, I'm not expecting to be competitive. But we'll see what happens there. This this Haas, is, it's a project. You know, this isn't my future. This is where I see the most benefit of being right now as opposed to like a factory team in, in Renault, as it were. But thank you very much for watching. Again, apologies for the delay. The Spanish Grand Prix will be soon. There's not going to be like a three-week or a month gap between these videos. Uh, and again, just, uh, just apologies. But if you have enjoyed, please hit that like button down below and comment any feedback. Subscribe to be the first notified about the content coming to the channel. I will see you all next time.